Data is an essential piece for most web applications. In this lecture, we're going to see how we can use JSON data in our application, and how we can use some of Angular's features to display the data on the screen. Okay, so before we get too much further into actually coding the application, let's take a minute to talk about some definitions that will be useful as we get going further on the app. So the first one we want to talk about is MVC, otherwise known as Model View Controller. And this is a pattern for organizing code into different areas of responsibility. And this is helpful as applications grow over time when they get much larger and there are more people working on them. We have a better way to reason about where different pieces of the application are. In typical MVC definitions, the model is generally thought to be the piece that communicates with the database. The view is what the user sees on their screen, and the controller is the piece that communicates between the view and the model. And so this does a good job of separating items out based on their responsibility. Angular takes the MVC approach, but the definitions are a bit different. Models are said to be the properties of scope, and we'll talk about scope in just a second. Views are the HTML templates that are rendered for the user to see, and controllers contain business logic for the application. So the quick definition of scope is that it's an object that ties the controller and the view together. And on scope, you can keep properties and functions that can be used by the view. There's much more to scope than we'll get into here, but we'll see the way that it works when we get to the actual code. And something that you may have already seen with Angular is the way that it does two-way data binding. And so this essentially means that there is one single source of truth for the application's data. When an application has a model in one place and when it's changed, then it will be reflected automatically everywhere. The typical example that you might have seen is if you had, say, a text element on the page and you had an input that was bound to that text element, Whenever you make a change within the input, it will be reflected automatically in that text element. So in this way, Angular is able to keep its application's data in sync from one place to the other. All right, so now let's get started with our app's first controller. I'm first going to make a new directory within our root ng cribs directory here, and I'm going to call it scripts. And so this will be the place where all the controllers go and all of the other JavaScript files that we will eventually make as well. Within scripts, let's create a new file and I'm going to call this one cribscontroller.js. Now, the first thing we need for our controller is a way to get a hold of the definition that we made here for our module. We need some way to reference this ng-cribs module. And what you might have seen, and what some people do, is they'll say something like var app is equal to the module. And then this app variable lets us reference that module somewhere else. But for a best practice, we're actually just going to make a strict reference like this. We're going to say Angular, and I'll break onto a new line, module ng-cribs. And if we omit the second argument here, if we don't put in that array, what this is going to do is just make a reference to the module called ng-cribs instead of declaring a new module. And so we can chain on a controller. The first argument for the controller is going to be its name. In this case, we'll call it cribs controller. And the second argument is going to be a function, an anonymous function, that will be used to define the controller body. And what we're going to do is inject the scope object. So dependency injection is another topic, but what it essentially does is it allows us to get a hold of other pieces of code where and when we need them. And so in this case, we need reference to scope right here within our controller, so we can inject it in by passing it into the anonymous function. What we can then do is we can put a property on scope. And let's maybe say scope.hello is equal to the string hello world. All right, so now we've got a property on scope called hello equal to the string hello world. And what we'd like to do is have this display on the screen. And so how do we do that? The first thing that we need to do is make a reference to it here. And you can see I've already brought in the cribscontroller.js script reference into index.html. And what we need to do is make reference to our controller somewhere within the HTML. 
As you know, we've got our ng app pointing to ng cribs here. And what we can do is something similar with controller. We can say ng controller is equal to cribs controller. And now in the same way that everything within the body tag is accessible to the application because we defined our ng app on the body tag, everything within the body tag is accessible by the controller as well. So instead of just strictly putting our hello ng cribs message on the screen, what we're going to do is use Angular's templating, which is defined by double curly braces, and bring in the property on scope called hello. And all we have to do here is provide double curly braces and our property name, which is hello, into the templating curly braces. So let's save that and see what it does for us over here in the view. Let's refresh. And as you can see, we've got hello world showing up there. The cool thing about templating as well is that you can do other things like you can evaluate expressions. So let's say I wanted to do five plus seven. If I save that and come back over, it evaluates to 12. And you can also do things like concatenation. So I could say hello, and then I could do a plus and then put something in quotes. How are you? Let's put a space there. And if we save that and come back over, we see we get our message showing up just fine. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is set up some real estate listing data for our application. And so let's come back over here to our controller. I'm just going to get rid of that line. And instead, let's put a new property on scope, and we're going to call this cribs. And cribs is going to be equal to an array of data objects. I'm just going to paste in the array of data objects, but I will let you pause and fill everything in for yourself. So just like how we had access to the string on the hello property on scope, we now have access to all of the data within this array. And we can make reference to it over here in our template by changing hello up for our cribs property. And I also want to use a filter in this case. Angular gives us access to various filters by using the pipe character. We put a pipe character and then we can say we want the JSON filter and that's going to give us a way to format our data on the screen more nicely than if we just went without it. So with that saved, let's go back over to the browser and let's refresh. And as you can see, things are coming through, but it doesn't look all that good. And what I forgot to do is change up this h1 tag for a pre-tag. And a pre-tag will just give us a way to format the code a bit more nicely. So let's save that again and try once more. And as you can see, the JSON is coming out looking nice. So that looks all right, but obviously we wouldn't ever want to display data in our application quite like this, in most cases anyway. So what we can do instead is we can repeat over our data and have it format in a way that we would want it to. And this is where we're going to introduce the ng repeat directive. So let's come over here and we'll create a new div. I'm going to give it a class of well, and that's just a bootstrap helper class that will give us some styling. And here I'm going to access the directive called ng repeat. And the syntax for this is ng repeat is equal to an item. In this case, we'll call it a crib singular, an item in our array of data. So cribs here makes reference to the same thing that we have here, cribs, which is the property on our scope. And this crib key here is going to give us a way to access each of the items as they repeat. Okay, so now we can come down here and maybe we'll want to put in a title. So the title in this case, we'll just use an H3. And this can be maybe the address. And so we can say crib.address. And that is going to make a reference to the address property that we have on each of our data objects here. So we've got our crib.address. Uh, next, maybe we want to have a strong tag here and we'll say the type is going to be crib.type. That's gonna be the type of listing. Next, uh, and then I'll just maybe copy that to save some time. We'll want the description. And this will be crib.description. 
And finally, we'll want the price. So we'll come over here and we'll do the price equal to crib.price. And let's maybe get rid of this down here. So if we save that and come back over to check it out in the browser, we can see that we have each of our data elements as they've repeated. One thing we might wanna do is change up the way that price is formatted here. And we can really easily do that with Angular by making reference to another of Angular's filters. In this case, we're going to use the currency filter. And once again, the filter is accessed by using the pipe character within our template and then making reference to an Angular filter there. This one's called currency. So let's save that, and if we come back over and refresh, we see that we have all of the prices showing up with a dollar sign at the front and then with the proper commas and decimals as well. So once again, we used ng-repeat to get access to our array of data objects. And the key that we used here doesn't have to be the singular version of the name of our array, but it's kind of just a good practice to use. And then we were able to access all of the properties on each of those elements by making reference to them right on the element here. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. In the next one, we are going to take a look at how we can get rid of this data array existing within our controller and offloading it to what's called a service. It's not really a good practice to keep things like data arrays right within our controllers. So we're gonna see how we can fix that up in the next one.